Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft Savages, episode 12 and today we're starting things off in my new underwater bunker. Look at this place, we built it in the previous episode of Hermit Craft and I have to say, oh, I mean, I just, I love Update Aquatic. Update Aquatic is just, it's fantastic, it's amazing, it's absolutely amazing. It's just, it's completely changed the way that we can play Minecraft. You can now do underwater builds without them looking horrendously ugly. It makes me happy seeing this sort of thing because these features, I mean, they're, they're about four years too late. And that's not me being, that's not me saying anything negative there. <laughs> I'm just saying they make so much sense. And they're amazing. I, I absolutely love it. So I'm really, really happy with this build and I can't wait to do more underwater builds in the future. But for today's episode, we are not going to be working underwater. We're going to be working up here in this rather enormous base that we have created, or at least the storage system. This is just the storage system. Oh boy. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to split this thing up into walkways. So I'm gonna grab myself actually some hardened concrete. I think I think we'll go hardened concrete for the edge of the walkway and then we might end up reflecting what we have going on here. So plenty, plenty of nether quarters going on. And then each one of these walkways on the top side is going to make up one arm of my storage system. Actually, before I do anything, we've got to do all the sides of this thing. So in a recent Hermitcraft episode, I think it was episode 10. Uh, yeah, we did this side here and now that I'm coming back, yeah, I really like the way that it looks. We have to place in all the concrete on the top, all the concrete at the bottom, and then all of the packed ice as well. That's actually quite a big project. Okay, so I've got plenty of gravel. I've just crafted up a bunch more concrete, but we might actually be running low on sand. Okay, I've got just enough to make another nine stacks of concrete, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to do all of the concrete that we need here. Thankfully, we had enough to do the outer rings, so that's all gone well, and we have the concrete going around the outside there. Now it is time to get the packed ice. Now, packed ice is something that I'm fairly certain, yeah, I have very little of. That is nowhere near enough. Do I not have more of that? I swear I got loads of the stuff. Whoa, hang on a minute. <laughs> I've just realized, so I, I was just admiring Iskal's build that he's done here. There's diorite in the, this is Iskal's build and he's put diorite on the floor. I'm, I'm, I feel, are we on the Hermitcraft set? Am I on, am I on the Hermitcraft server? I feel like. I can't be on the Hermitcraft server. Surely I'm not on the Hermitcraft server. I am. I was on the Hermitcraft server. This is Hermitcraft season six. And, and Iskal's building in diorite. <laughs> He's got something wrong with him. He's, something's happened to Iskal. I'm gonna have to have a talk to him. I'm gonna have to talk with him. Anyway, we need more packed ice. So I'm currently on the lookout for places that I can get it that isn't going to make Iskal's base ugly. And apparently Grian knows of a good spot. So he's coming over and he's gonna let me know where to go. This is promising. Oh, he's just given- he's given me loads of that- that- that's very- <laughs> thank you! <laughs> you know, I feel really guilty that I just thought he was gonna come over and tag me. <laughs> he was actually being helpful. With a massive thanks to Grian, the packed ice going around the outside of the frisbee is now all in place. So, next up, we're going to build up the walkways, and you may notice that these walkways are actually going to be slightly wider than the bottom ones, and that's because we want plenty of space for the storage system, because the storage system I don't really know what to do in terms of the design. I think I'm going to be using the old school hoppers design because the one that we built in the last season of Hermitcraft just ran into problems whenever we used to unload the chunks. So I think I'm going to have a bit of an old school design. But I don't know whether to make it arc up and over or to have it on like one flat layer. I almost like the idea of just having a flat layer of chest. I think that'll look I think that'll look cool. Things are coming together pretty nicely here. The next thing that we have to do is we need to get all of the quartz in place for these central sections. And unfortunately, once again, I am totally out of quartz. So I think we're gonna have to do a one hour quartz mining session and hopefully we get enough to actually fill in these walkways here. Now in this super fast time lapse chart, I just want to talk to you about the camper van because for those of you who don't know, uh, I own a 1974 T2 VW bay window camper van. If you haven't seen it before, there's pictures of it on my Instagram, there's pictures of it on the filming channel, there's there's pictures of it pretty much everywhere. I absolutely love that thing. It was my dream car when I was a kid and uh, I got one last year 
And we've been pooling around in it. I've done about, I think probably about 12,000 miles in it, which is pretty good for a classic car. No real problems apart from, I mean, obviously the standard stuff, like the carbs broke, the alternator broke, uh, fuel leak. Yeah, there's been quite a few problems, but it's a classic car. It's now running it absolutely perfectly. And over the last couple of months, me and Vicky have been restoring it on the inside. So not necessarily restoring it, we've been renovating it, giving it an all new interior because the interior was all completely blue. So we stripped all of that out. We've used all reclaimed materials and just odd bits and pallet slats and coffee sacks and everything. Uh, and it's come together amazingly. I'm so, so happy. So I'll be posting pictures of it on Twitter and Instagram over the next couple of days so you can see because I'm so proud and I'm really really proud of Vicky because Vicky has put her heart and soul into it and it looks amazing so uh, I, I just can't wait to get out in it and go on trips in it and again camp out because it's honestly one of my favorite things to do that was actually pretty successful I mean as you can see we have got ourselves a whole ton of nether quartz blocks hopefully that is going to be enough to do all of the walkways I mean it should be in theory I think that's probably about 18 stacks of slabs Maybe slightly more than, yeah, slightly more than, <laughs> maybe, maybe it might be enough. Let's pop back over to the base and hope that we don't die in the process. We made it, and now it is time for me to go to sleep because it is a silly o'clock at this point in time in the studio. So I'm gonna head off and I will come back and finish up my projects tomorrow morning. Well, my game crashed overnight. I swear, I haven't had one successful AFK session for this entire season of Hermitcraft. <laughs> oh, ridiculous, we're never gonna get pumpkins. Anyway, despite that failure, all of the quartz is now on all of the floors, so that's all looking good. I've also put quartz around that central circle now, so that should all be done, and our base is looking very pearly white. I do need to put in the concrete in both of those though. Anyway, next up, it's sea lanterns making their way across and I think the only way that I can really think of doing this is by having the sea lanterns popping up. Now let me know down in the comment section what you think to this because I mean, I'm not, it's not that I'm not, I'm not 100% certain on it. I quite like it, I think it adds depth, but it could be annoying when I'm walking around. And it's also made me thought, they've made slabs and stairs for all of the different prismarine blocks. Can you imagine how cool it would have been if they had made a sea lantern slab? That would have been ridiculous. This looks totally ridiculously cool. I absolutely love the sea lanterns in the top section. It looks all so expensive. I don't know how to describe it other than it looks like an expensive, well, because it is an expensive build. There's lots of quartz in this thing and all the materials are quite difficult to get. But yeah, no, this looks fantastic. Okay, right, next we're going to start work on the biomes. Finally, we're gonna get that started. And I'd say the first biome that I want to do is, I actually want to do desert. Now that may seem like a ridiculous thing, but I mean, all of these biomes are going to be kind of, they're like I don't, bespoke biomes, I guess. We're, we're going to be taking a leaf out of Scar's book, and we might actually be taking Scar out of his book and bringing him over to my base to do some terraforming, <laughs> because, yeah, well, I, I'm going to take a leaf out of his book by trying to add some, some nicer elements to each biome that I create. And I think the biomes that I'm going to go for are desert, nice flowers, uh, I'm thinking like the palm tree biome that we did for the island in Hermitcraft season 5 and then maybe an icy biome, but I'm not 100% certain on that. I'm really hoping for silk touch here. Really hoping for silk touch. Really hoping for silk touch. That's actually about as good as we can get because now we can pop over to Impulse's place and get silk touch. And boom. There we go, silk touch shovel. Right, let's gather up a whole ton of grass because we are going to need a whole ton of grass. Now, I think the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to lay out the foundations. So the foundations of every single one of these biomes is going to be laid in. So I'm going to place in all the blocks so that we get all of the different shapes and sizes. And then we can take the leaf out of Scar's book soon, once we actually get all of this laid out. But obviously we can't be doing decorative stuff if we don't actually have the main basis in place. So this one is going to be grass, I guess that one will be grass, then this one can be desert, and this can be something else. Then we get the alternating. It's a little bit unfortunate that this just, the, there's a few sections of the grass where I think here we'd be considered, yeah, we're in the ocean. So we're, we're way over the, obviously, why did I have to check on F3 to see if I was over the ocean? I'm obviously <laughs> over the ocean, but that does mean that our grass color isn't quite as vibrant as it is somewhere like over here. Am I going crazy? Yeah, here, here. This is what I was looking for. Either way, okay, we're gonna need to get some mounds in and just some nice 
terraforming stuff. I'm terrible at this. Oh, I'm curious actually. I've so I've done a little bit here. What's this gonna do to our water? Uh, it's gonna darken it, isn't it? Especially once it actually gets dark up there. Right, we, we might need to work something out. Oh dear, yeah. Now that we've got more in. Oh, that has gone pitch black. Okay, we're gonna need sea lanterns above all the water, I think, and that's gonna be a lot. The other thing is, this is going to use lots upon lots upon lots of resources. We've already used one full inventory of grass, and we're probably about halfway done with one of the modules. We still have another module to do, and then the other two, which are going to be made out of sand, which I've just realized. So for the desert one, we're going to need to do a full flat area of something like dirt, so that we can then place the sand on top. Oh, why, why did I choose to build a desert? I believe this should be the final few blocks. I think this is going to do it. I'm not 100% certain, but that all looks pretty solid to me. Okay, let's take off and let's fly around and let's see how this thing is looking. Answer is, obviously, it looks like it's been terraformed by me. <laughs> Well, it's not that unnatural It's all right. It's not it's not terrible Obviously once we get more trees in there and we actually get some things going on then it will be absolutely fine The thing I'm curious about now is What on earth is it gonna look like underneath? <laughs> yeah, that's dark Wow Wow <laughs> Well, what on earth do we do about that? Jeez. I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to fill in all of these blocks here. So we're going to do the other grass module, which is opposite this one. I'm, I'm going to terraform it in a fairly similar way. And then we can start working out how we're going to do the other modules. And I've been thinking, I think the other one. So we're going to do one desert, and then I think the other one should be ocean. I think having an ocean one, especially with all of the new things that we have in this update, would be really, really cool. You know what's really funny? Is that at the end of Hermitcraft Season 5, I said that I was actually going to tone things down for this season. And I was maybe going to work on slightly smaller builds. And now I've gone and just built something probably bigger than anything I built in Hermitcraft Season 5. And it's only going to expand from here. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> and I dread to think what Hermitcraft Season 7 is going to look like. I'm going to need my own separate server. <laughs> so we have a slight problem. Doc wants it to stay dark because he's trying to farm phantoms. But <laughs> there's no torches anywhere in this entire build. And stuff is spawning by the bucket load everywhere. Uh, this could end badly for me, I think. Somehow, I've managed to survive this. I've managed to stay alive, and I've managed to get everything constructed on that side as well. And... Yeah, I mean, it looks... It's so difficult to tell if this... I mean, obviously, just a flat area of grass isn't exactly going to be awe-inspiring at all, <laughs> in the slightest. I feel like it's a good start, though. It does make you start to doubt your own, like, ideas for what you want to- No, no, oh no, this is gonna look cool. Once this is lit up and has builds on it, I think it's gonna be... I think it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> it's quite different from anything that I've done before, but yeah, this is ridiculous. Now that I'm looking, this is totally ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so, as I said, so one of these sides is going to be a desert, which is going to be a pain in the backside to do because obviously we're going to have to fill in all the blocks at the bottom and then we're going to have to do all the sand. The other side I think is going to be an ocean, which is equally going to be a pain in the backside to do because filling things in with water is always quite tricky. So I guess yet more resource gathering is required here. So I've brought four shulker boxes with me and I've just repaired up my shovel. So two of these shulker boxes are going to be for sand and two of them are going to be for dirt once again because the dirt is going to make up the bottom of the ocean. I apologize, Mr. Rabbit, but you're kind of in the way, mate. I'm sort of regretting not having mending on my shovel. This has already been repaired three times and it's probably going to start getting too expensive at some point. And I've also, I'm, I'm regretting taking out the dirt underneath this area. I seem to be... Yeah, okay, let's, let's move over here. Get out of this water zone that I'm in. What on earth is Doc M doing? He has been killed by a phantom probably about eight or nine times. And it's the middle of the day. 
he's he must be doing something crazy. Well, as you can hear, there's there's some serious construction work going on right outside my window. So I think for these two sections here, I'm going to do them in the form of a third person time lapse. It makes more sense anyway. It's going to look super satisfying. Should end up looking really cool. Uh, so yeah, sand, ocean. Let's do this. This is going to be a long one. So in this super fast time lapse chat, I want to talk to you about my plans for the next couple of months because out of nowhere. It's just gone completely crazy. I've filled myself up with tons of traveling and tons of really cool projects and things that I'm super excited about. So the first thing is, is that I'm going to be going back to the Philippines. Uh, if everything works out, I'm going to be going back to the Philippines in about two weeks. Now, as you know, I went to the Philippines earlier on in the year. I absolutely loved it. And this filming project came up that would allow us to go to the Philippines. And obviously that is like a match made in heaven for me because I absolutely love filming and I absolutely love the Philippines. So obviously we've jumped to that opportunity and hopefully, as I say, we're going to be leaving, yeah, in the next couple of weeks, which is pretty short notice. So I'm gonna have to get everything prepared in time. It's gonna be a bit hectic. And then later on in September, I'm heading off to Boston, so I'm going back to the US. That's going to be cool. And then also I'm heading off to Italy for a, a relative's or family member's wedding, which is extremely cool. It's actually my first ever wedding and it's in Italy, which is going to be gorgeous, so I can't wait for that. And in between that, I also have a handful of filming projects, not only for the filming channel, but also got some mini documentary shoots that are going to be on other YouTube channels, including one YouTube channel which I absolutely love and it's something that I've always aspired to uh, and it is to do with cars and, and automotive stuff so we've got a mini documentary set up with an awesome car with an awesome owner and we're going to be filming that over the next couple of weeks and I just, I can't wait, I seriously can't wait. So there's, it's, all of this is just kicked off in the past couple of weeks which means I'm incredibly busy but also really, really happy to be working on cool stuff. All right, we've reached a point where I thought it would be a good idea to stop and chill out and see how far we've managed to come. And I mean, obviously this is, yeah, this is this is pretty impressive. We've managed to get, we've managed to get all of the areas in place. As you can see, I've actually, I kind of changed my, so originally when I was building the ocean one, cause that one over there is going to be the ocean one. It was just going to be purely water, but then I thought it'd be quite cool if we got some, some grass and some sand around it. And then in the center we'd have the water and then maybe we'd have like a small little island on, in there and then a bridge going across and things. So that is kind of the plan for that one. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I do, I like, I like this idea. I just, it's going to need so much work to get it looking good. And I also feel, now that I'm looking at this, that we need a slightly thicker border going around, around the edge. Maybe some concrete bordering going around? because it looks like a very fine edge <laughs> on the side there. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is going to be tough. See, my my only other idea that I had for this area is that we keep it pretty much flat. See, no, I don't think that would look very good. I think it will look best once we get all of everything in place. Like everything in place and we get all of the bone meal in and we get all of the the cobblestone spikes and we get we get some really nice terraforming then in here i was thinking we have a desert temple have some cacti we have all of the sandstone slabs and things making it all look smooth and stuff and then on this one this will be the flowery one so we get some cool trees in there and we get some crazy kind of mystical looking builds like all of that will come together and then obviously in the center here we'll have our storage system and that's where well that's where our storage system is going to be so that's kind of where i am at this point in time but this it's kind of scared me a little bit so i think i'm going to leave it for now and i think i'm going to take a think about it and i'm just going to try and come up with some ideas maybe smooth this out a little bit as well because this is a bit strange looking <laughs> so we'll work on that um but yeah no this is this is looking good though i'm i'm happy it's just, this is a big old project and I want to get it right. As I said earlier on in the episode as well, I believe we still have our free terraforming task that we have from Scar. So it might be worth actually bringing Scar over and having him help out once we, so once we get the details, so we'll get some of the details in place and we'll do some work on it and then we'll bring Scar, because obviously this is huge. We don't want to, we don't want to burden Scar with a massive enormous project. 
<laughs> so we'll get like a lot of the details in place and we'll get the the start and then Scar can come in and he can do some of the finishing touches and just make it look really pretty. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is actually all I've got time for today. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please draw to that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo and I'm out. I'll see you later.